If you ever wondered how easy it is to make a cabinet using a CNC, stick around because I'm going to show you front to end how we made this cabinet using this CNC and that computer that's behind the cabinet. If you ever wondered how easy... Oh. I typically start with a hand-drawn sketch that I've gone over with the customer to detail out the width of the cabinet, the height, um, the depth of the cabinet, um, any specifics that they want, uh, whether they want adjustable shelves in there, if it's a base cabinet, whether there's drawers. Uh, this is a very simple cabinet that goes above a toilet. So after I've gone through with them, I'll mark down some items that they don't necessarily really need to, to know or understand. But for me, I need to know if there's a finished side to the cabinet, what's butting up to a wall that's going up to two walls, uh, or fitting in between two walls. So what I've done is mark down here on the piece of paper my dimensions um, and any specific items that I need before I take this over and draw it in mosaic. So from here, uh, I'll move over to mosaic. I'll show you the process of creating that cabinet and then we'll walk through the process of how to um, create the cut files and send it over the CNC. Now we're over at the CNC. I've opened up a program called Mosaic. This is the program that I use to design my cabinets and then eventually send the G-code or the cut files over to the CNC for that to, to cut it out. Um, the first thing that I'll do in here since we're going off of the, the drawing that I uh, showed you previously we're going to go ahead and create a file for that customer. So I'm going to go new. Um, and we'll just call it William Bath Cabinet. One of the first things that you might need to do if you're not super familiar with the Mosaic program is adjust any settings for this particular project. Since most of my projects are the same, um, and this one fits in line with the other cabinets that I typically build. There's nothing in the settings that I will need to change. Everything uh, was set up when I bought the software um, and it's uh, set up at the global level. So I don't necessarily need to change anything from a job to job basis um, unless the job uh, requires something that is abnormal for how I normally build cabinets. From there, the, one of the first things that you will do is draw a wall. Uh, you need a wall in order to put a cabinet on. Since, it's a small, since this is a small job, um, I don't need to draw the entire bathroom. I just need one wall so I can put a cabinet on top of it. Um, so I've drawn the wall. It's nothing fancy. It's just a wall. Um, from there, I'll go in and click on the products. And then I'm going to change from frameless to face frame because that's the type of cabinet that this customer wants. On the left hand side, you'll see all of the cabinets that are available to you to choose from. I'm going to choose a wall cabinet with a pair of doors. I will make adjustments to it so it will not look exactly like this once I'm done, but I'll show you exactly how that is uh, performed. Now that I see the cabinets on the wall, um, I will need to change the parameters of that cabinet. For, if you recall previously when I walked through the, the drawing of the cabinet, the width of that cabinet needed to be 32 inches, the height 40 inches, and the depth of 10 inches. The other thing that I need to change on here, again if you remember back to um, the hand drawn, the right side of the cabinet was finished. The left side was butting up to a wall. So on this particular um, setting here, finished ends, I'm just going to change that to the right side. This is, uh, if I go over here and scroll and look, you'll see that the face frame is flush on the right side. And on the left hand side, you'll see I have a half inch hangover here for scribing that cabinet to the wall in case the, the wall is a, a bit askew. From here, I can double click the cabinet to go into the settings. 
The first thing that I'm going to do, since I'm going to change the look and feel of this particular cabinet, is I'm going to reset all of the settings for this cabinet. It still saves my, my dimensions, everything that I did previously, but it does take out any adjustable shelves or anything that may have been done by default in this particular cabinet. From there, I'm going to go into the interior of the cabinet. I'm going to create a fixed shelf at 11 inches above the floor. Click on that again, make sure that's listed as a fixed shelf. And then I'm going to add one adjustable shelf in the middle of the upper part of the cabinet. I'll go back to the face side. I will add a, a face frame. And then I'm going to move that guy to a height of 10 inches so it covers up that fixed shelf. So that way I have a smooth floor on this end here. Um, and then this little cubby will be open for the customer to put their hand towels or knickknacks or whatever. On the upper side, I will place a pair of doors there. And essentially, we are done. Uh, very simple, quick and easy. Um, if you don't have a lot of changes to make, the, you can move through this process really, really quickly. So now the cab that is built, I validated everything is right. Um, I will typically at this point send an image of this to the customer for them to validate the measurements, the width, the height, the depth, the look and feel. I can also click on the 3D and give them a 3D image of what that cabinet would look like. Um, in their home. Um, from there I will go through and create my cut list that will be sent over to the CNC. Uh, first things I'll have to do is create cut list, click on optimize, choose the material that I will be using to cut this cabinet out of, takes a few seconds for the next part to pop up. I'll validate a few items, uh, making sure that, yep, I'm cutting it at a three quarter inch material. My sheet is four foot by eight foot. Um, I won't walk through all of the settings in here. That could take me a very long time to do so. But if there is something that you would like to see that I've brushed over very quickly, leave a comment below. If it's something simple, I will respond in the comment section with an answer. If it's something that's a little more lengthy or something you want me to show you, um, I can definitely create more videos about Mosaic, um, about building cabinets in the software um, in conjunction with the CNC. Just let me know what that is and, and I will produce those. Once I validated all of that information, I'll click on optimize. I'll click on optimize again. And then what it does is it nests all of the parts that I need for this cabinet on a sheet of plywood. Now, if the cabinet was bigger, it may bleed into a second sheet, but thankfully this is you know a very small cabinet. It uh, ends up fitting nicely on one sheet. You will notice that there are two parts here with green halos on them. That tells me that these parts have a flip side operation. So there will be um, dados that need to be cut on those parts on the reverse side of the sheet of plywood. Um, so you'll see when I go through the process, I will cut those parts that way. I will flip the sheet over, turn the CNC back on, and then it'll cut the remaining uh, parts out. Um, and I guess you'll, you'll see that happen. Um, since I have some uh, space on this particular sheet, I will cut the remnants. Uh, for later use. Um, sometimes they just need a little scrap piece of plywood laying around, so I'll do that. From there, I'm going to click Generate G Code, Calculate, click on G Code again. Um, I'm going to select the flip side operations as well as the primary sheet program, click OK. Um, best practice when you have to do flip side operations is doing a squaring cut. I don't find very many sheets of plywood that are square, so it's always good to add the squaring cut. Essentially what will happen is it will cut my flip side operations, then it will cut the two sides of the plywood at a quarter of an inch to ensure that that side is completely square for when I flip it over and set it up against my reference pins. 
So best practice, if you're running a CNC, do it. From there, it's going to ask me to save those files out to my C drive. I'll click save. Here's the second one. I'll click save. So from here, I will leave this up because I want to label the parts once they come off the CNC and I know what parts the back, what parts the adjustable shelf, what parts the left side, right side. Um, should be self-explanatory, but when you're cutting a lot of cabinets, it is better to label them so that way you don't get things mixed up. Um, so now I'm going to move over to the CNC. We'll get that thing up and running, and then I'll be back shortly. Now that everything's been sanded um, and we're good to go, we're going to go ahead and put everything together. Essentially, all I'm going to do today is, uh, is glue the parts together and use an 18-gauge pen nailer. Uh, sometimes on base cabinets, bigger cabinets, I will um, drill pocket holes for um, joining the parts together but on this small upper cabinet glue and pin nails is is plenty fine so we'll start to do that And I always have a, a wet paper towel around to wipe up any glue. Um, it's always good just to do it now well before it dries. And on a paint grade, paint grade cabinet, I'm not as worried about staining the wood because um, it's getting painted anyway. So, But I do like to clean that up. It's a lot easier to do it now than it is to do it later. All right, uh, now the... The sides, the top and the bottom are all put together now. I'll glue the back in. Um, mostly put together again wet rag wipe the glue up and then we'll put the fixed shelf in if I have time I'm not pressed for time I will throw clamps on this to keep uh, keep the joints tight um, pin nailers good uh, will hold it but clamps are always better if you have the time to let it sit for a little while while the glue dries All right, fixed shelf's gonna go in. Now the fixed shelf's got a rabbit on either side. Inside of the shelf has dados that were cut in. And so we'll glue those. We'll slide the, uh, the shelf in, uh, pin nail it, and then we'll probably clamp her up for a little while and let her dry.
check again for any glue squeeze out. I think we're pretty good. All right. And that's it for right now. Uh, we'll let that guy dry in the clamps um, and then we'll get to working on the face frame. And, uh, and then by the time the face frame is done, this should be, should be ready to sand and uh, put together. Before I go over and cut out the pieces for the face frame, I like to get my, my parts list put together. So what I've done is I've drawn kind of an exploded view of the cabinet and the face frame pieces. So I know that the height of the cabinet is 40 inches. Um, I know that I'm going to have a half inch hangover um, on the left hand side flush on the right. So I know I need two two inch pieces by 40. Um, I know I need a three inch piece on the top of the cabinet by 28 inches. And then I need two two inch pieces uh, by 28 inches for the base or the, the bottom of the cabinet. And then to cover that fixed shelf to create that cubby inside there. So I'm gonna go and cut those pieces and then begin to put that face frame together. I have all the parts cut now for the face frame. Um, I didn't film um, trimming up the pieces, running them through the planer, cutting them on the miter saw to length, putting the pocket holes in there. Um, I'm sure if you're following me or you're watching this video, you've probably seen that before. So I didn't want to bore you with that. If you haven't, um, there's a plethora of videos out there by other creators that actually will show you how to, how to do that part of it. So. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put together the face frame. I'm just gonna clamp everything onto my CNC spoil board. I have a, uh, a clamping station in the back, but it's dark, it's tight. There's not a great area for filming. So I'm gonna do it here um, on the table. Uh, essentially, I'm just gonna glue all my parts together, clamp them down and then put pocket screws in and then uh, fit it on the cabinet and see how it goes. Is put together now, um, all done with pocket screws on the back side. Um, I do have one more piece to put on, but what I typically like to do on smaller cabinets um, is just put the face frame on and then, then just add this piece um, once it's on so that way I can get a perfect fit and I don't have to worry about um, getting the measurements exactly perfect or having to do a lot of sanding uh, to get that uh, that bottom piece flush. So we'll go over and get this guy glued up, put on and uh, get ready for paint. cabinet is complete it has been sanded up and ready for paint I do hope you enjoyed this video I know it's a long one thank you for sticking around if you're still watching at this point 